gone over. The beginning when Samson, Samson is introduced really his parents in chapter number 13. And so really one could look at the life of Samson, you know, in accordance to the women that were involved in his life. And so that certainly seemed to be a, um, in many respects, a, a downfall as he gets older and the troubles he runs into because of what he allows himself to do and the women he allows himself to be involved in. And so what we're going to do today is sort of look at look at it in that respect. Now we're not going to go through the whole life of Samson, but we're going to get an overview this morning of the life of Samson. And there's a couple topics that I want to get into, not this morning, but a couple of topics we're going to get into in the next few weeks here as we continue looking at Samson and the life of Samson. And so uh, today we're going to look at... Um, Samson, we're going to look, we're going to get to chapter number uh, 15, which is where we should be if we're going, you know, chapter by chapter and verse by verse. Um, but we're going to do a little bit of review um, by looking at Samson sort of categorized by the women that was in his life. And so um, let's have a word of prayer and we'll get into our, our uh, Bible lesson for today. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we do thank you so much for all that you have blessed us with, Lord. Thank you for your word, and Lord, I pray that it would speak to our hearts and lives. Um, Lord, help us not to miss the truth of your word that you would have for us today. And Holy Spirit, we yield over to you. Lord, even during this Sunday school hour, maybe you'll speak to our hearts and lead us to making a decision for you, Lord, and help us never to be forgetful of the fact that you always want to, your word is always going to take effect on us and help us to be mindful of that. Uh, thank you, Lord, for, for, for all you blessed us with, Lord. Thank you for those who are here today. We think of those who are not feeling well, those who are sick, Lord. Please have your healing hand on them, um, that they will get better soon. And uh, thank you for all that you've done. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. So we saw, so I mentioned it just a moment ago that, you know, you can really categorize Samson's life according to the different women that were in his life. And so we're going to back up a little bit and go through quickly in, in that respect, um, looking at it that way. And so um, in chapter number 13, we see really the first um, woman really that would be involved in the life of Samson, and that is his mother. And we talked about that quite a bit when we were in chapter number 13. This is the introduction of Samson in the book of Judges. Now, you remember now the book of Judges is a, a, a continual cycle of events. The children of Israel um, are, are going to slowly get away from the Lord and then they will find themselves getting away from God and then God will judge them by making them servants, right, to the inhabitants of the land. At this particular time, they're going to be servants to the Philistines. And with time, um, they will cry out to God and, and ask for God's help, and God will help them by sending a judge over Israel that will deliver them off from underneath those that are, those that are oppressing them. And then um, what happens is, over time, once again, they find themselves becoming apathetic. They find themselves getting away from God, doing evil in the sight of the Lord again. And then God has to judge them and make them servants once again to the inhabitants of the land of Canaan. And that's exactly what happens again here in chapter number 13. The Bible says in the children of Israel, verse number 1, did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And so they are continuing, continuing down this path of doing evil in the sight of the Lord, and God's going to send someone again to help them. And so that would be Samson. But chapter 13 starts out with Samson's parents. And so we see the first woman that I'm going to categorize the life of Samson with would be Samson's mother. Um, uh, the Bible says in verse number 2 of chapter 13, And there was a certain uh, man of Zorah, of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren, and bare not, uh, uh, and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman. So the angel of the Lord that's mentioned here comes to Samson's mother, comes to this woman, long before she has children. In fact, she can't have children, and so she's not thinking along the lines of having any children, but the angel of the Lord appears unto her and then tells her that she's going to have um, um, a child. So 
Uh, we see his mother. She's married to Manoah. And we see that in these first couple of verses. She's visited by the angel of the Lord. Now, that's an interesting title. The angel of the Lord. And we see that in verse number three. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman. Now, one of the topics that we're going to get into in the next couple of weeks here, maybe a couple of weeks down the road, is that phrase, the angel of the Lord, and who is this that's visiting them? There's some things in common when you see that phrase, the angel of the Lord, that you often see when the angel of the Lord appears. Um, uh, there's a fear of death amongst the people that see the angel of the Lord. Um, right? There is a... Uh, um, uh, you know, oftentimes you'll see little clues on, on who they are actually seeing, and we're going to do a little study on that coming up um, as we consider who, who this is. Um, but she was visited by the angel of the Lord, and we see that in verse number 3, and we'll see that throughout the rest of this chapter, chapter 13. Um, uh, and so then we see in verses 4 and 5 that she was told that Samson would be, um, she would have a son, and that he would take a Nazarite vow. Notice verse number 4, Now therefore beware, I pray thee, and drink not the wine, nor strong drink, and eat not anything unclean. For lo, thou shalt conceive, and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. It specifically says that he shall be a Nazarite. Verse number 7 says, But uh, he said unto, unto me, this is her reciting this back to her husband, he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and now drink no wine nor strong drink, neither shall they eat anything, uh, eat any unclean thing, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Now that's interesting, because the Nazarite vow is something laid out in God's law that one could voluntarily, voluntarily do for a, a brief time. Um, we, and when we were in this chapter earlier, we looked at how Paul uh, seemingly took this vow in his own life, and that there were men that were dedicated in the book of Acts that were with Paul also, who also took this Nazarite vow for a certain amount of time. And one can do that according to God's law. But Samson, in particular, took this Nazarite vow from the womb until the day he died, until his death. And so uh, that's, that's a very interesting thing. Um, uh, typically, one would take a Nazarite vow to purposely dedicate time to concentrate on your service to the Lord. Similar to how you and I would fast, you know, maybe for a brief time, um, uh, some sort of a time frame in order to remind ourselves that we want to focus on prayer and focus on our requests before God. And, you know, as we have those hunger pains in our lives, we are reminded of the fact that we're praying about something specific, right? And so this Nazarite vow would be something that one would do uh, and, and they would take a time where they would really dedicate themselves to thinking about the things of God. And so we see that he has this Nazarite vow ordered to him for his whole life. And so that's, that's interesting because he doesn't seem to be, and i got to be honest with you guys, I struggled a little bit with the life of Samson because it's hard to get practical application towards our own lives with this character we see in the Bible. Right? So he's filled with the Spirit of God. And there's no doubt about that. So what does one do, right? How to be filled with the Spirit of God. Well, let's look at the life of Samson. Well, no, we don't want to do that. <laughs> As we begin to look at his life, wait a minute, I don't want to do that. <laughs> and you begin to list out the things that Samson did in his life. You think to yourself, this guy does not seem to be a pattern <laughs> for how to be filled with the Spirit of God. Um, and so here's not, a, here's not a man who, here is a man who didn't, take a time in his life to really dedicate himself to the Lord as much as he was before he was even born told that he would take the Nazarite vow by his parents. And a lot of the actions that he takes are not reflective of something that you and I would want to do in our own lives. Uh, but yet God used him. And so, <clears throat> so here we have the, the fact, and we see also in verses number 13 and 14 that he would take a Nazarite vow. Um, Samson's parents seemed to be godly people. Um, and, and they truly, they truly were. Uh, they, they prayed to God. Verse number 8, Then Manoah entreated the Lord. When he found out about this, what did he do? He turned to God and prayed to him. Um, uh, they desired to raise their, their son correctly or in the right way. Verse number 8 says, Then Manoah entreated the Lord and said, O oh, my Lord, let the man of God which thou didst send to come again unto us and teach us 
what we should what we shall do unto the child that shall be bo- that shall be born. We, we want to know how we should raise our child. In verse number twelve, when he's actually speaking to the, the the man of God or the angel of the Lord, he refers to him as the man of God. Verse number twelve, Manoah said, "Now let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child, and how shall we do unto him?" And they they desired to know how should we raise our children. They seem to be godly people. Um, uh, they saw answers to prayer. Verse number nine says, "And God hearkened to the voice of Manoah." Okay, Manoah said, "Bring this man back that we can see him again." And God hearkened to his voice. He, he had a prayer request, and God answered that prayer. Um, and so they seem to see answers to prayer. They're showing signs of being very godly people. Um, they wanted God's instructions. Verse number 12 says, And Manoah said, Let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child, and how shall we do <clears throat> unto him? We want to know what God's instructions are in our life. And so by all accounts that we see in chapter number 13, we see that they are godly parents, or at least some degree had a desire that God would direct in their lives as they are going to raise this child now. Uh, And so Samson's parents seem to be godly parents. And once again, we're looking at the life of Samson, and and here we start with his mother, right? And his parents and his mom and dad both seem to be godly people, concerned and interested in in raising their child right. Um, Samson's parents saw God perform a great miracle, and you see that in verses number 15 through 23 of Manoah, verse number 15, um, said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray thee, let us detain thee until uh, we shall have uh, made ready a kid for thee. And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Though thou uh, detain me, I will not eat of thy bread, and if thou wilt offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord. For Manoah knew not that it was that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name? That, uh, thy, uh, uh, that when thy saints come to pass... We may do the honor. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest thus after my name, seeing it is secret? Isn't that interesting? There's another clue to this title, angel of the Lord. He doesn't tell his name. You see the same thing with, you know, when, when uh, um, uh, Jacob wrestled with the angel in the book of Genesis, and he wouldn't tell him. He asked him his name, and he wouldn't tell him. So um, that, that's for another study, but that's very interesting. But they're going to see, they're going to see God do a miracle. Uh, verse number, um, verse number nineteen. So Manoah took a kid with a meat offering and offered it upon a rock unto the Lord, and uh, the angel did wondrously. And Manoah and his wife looked on. So the angel does something wondrously. Right, something's going to happen here, um, and they saw this take place. And so, um, and then verse number twenty and on describes what they saw. Uh, verse number twenty. For it came to pass. When the flame went up toward heaven from off the altar, that the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar. And Manoah and his wife looked on it and fell on their faces to the ground. And so they immediately gave uh, some sort of a worship or reverence to what just happened. And so um, they saw this great miracle <coughs> take place in front of them. Verse number 21 says, But the angel of the Lord did no more repair uh, appear, I'm sorry, did more appear to Manoah and, and to his wife. Manoah knew that he was an angel of the Lord. At this point, he realized um, that this was not just a, a prophet or a man of God. This was an angel of the Lord, someone from heaven. Um, and so they saw God do a great miracle. Uh, and then we see that Samson was born just as the angel of the Lord had said. All right, so, so the angel of the Lord said Samson's going to be born, and he was. Verse number 24 and 25, and the woman bare a son... And called his name Samson, and the child grew, and the Lord blessed him, and the Spirit of the Lord began to move, as at times in the camp of Dan, between um, Zorah and Eshtol. So here we have <coughs> the birth of Samson, and that's the character we're looking at, right? We're looking at the life of Samson. Uh, and we looked in a lot more detail at chapter number 13, which brings us to chapter number 14, our second woman in Samson's life. We have his mother, right? A lot of interesting things we see in there. But the second woman, also we don't know her name. We didn't know, the Bible doesn't say in chapter 13 what um, Manoah's wife's name was or what Samson's mother's name uh, was or, you know, was. But in chapter 14, we have another woman in Samson's life and she, she also doesn't say her name. It's just, she's from Timnath, the woman in Timnath. And she is involved in chapters 14 and chapter 15. 15 are chapter for today. So in verse number five, chapter number 14, we see that Samson sees a woman that he wants 
And it seems as if, in these verses, um, he's just driven by possibly just physical attraction. He just sees this woman, and he says, I want this woman. Verse number 1 of chapter 14, And Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines, and came up and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath with the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore get her for me to wife. He's a, attracted to this woman somehow. Um, and so he sees the woman that he wants and he desires to have her. Now there is some objection. Samson's parents who seem to be godly parents, right? They, they seem to be, according to chapter 13, at least desiring to be in tune with what the Lord would want. Um, and so they're not happy with this choice that he makes in a woman. He, and they, they have some reservations about this. Verses number 3 says, Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren, or among all my people, that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And by the way, they were supposed to marry within, um, uh, within Israel, not somebody outside of Israel, certainly not the Philistines. Philistines would be a classic enemy of the children of Israel throughout Scripture. And we talked a little bit about how, you know, last week I think we were in this chapter, we, we talked about how the foundation of their relationship was bad and they ended up being a, 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 a disastrous situation. And we talked about Dinah and how that happened to her and, and others in the Scripture as well. well. Esau, I think we talked about how their, their, their foundation or their reasoning for marriage was wrong to begin with and it ended up in a bad way and certainly that happens here with um, with uh, Samson um, and this woman of Timnath. Now, what's interesting is verse number 4 which says but his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord that he sought an occasion against the Philistines. So Samson seemed to seek an occasion against the Philistines by getting together with this woman, and the whole thing was of the Lord. And this is what I'm talking about, how it gets a little bit difficult to draw practical application. Um, but God is in it, all right? If there's any practical application, it can be, you know, God is going to continue to work in our lives in spite of us. Um, and, uh, you know, he takes this Nazarite vow, which would include not cutting his hair. And so we were reading over the life of Samson a little bit after dinner the other night. Um, uh, and I opened the Bible and just read chapter number 13. And, and, uh, and so some questions arose amongst our, our family. And, and they said things like, well, why, you know, Laura even said, why, you know, it just seems odd to me that the Bible clearly talks about men not having long hair, but yet God ordered for Samson to let his hair grow real long. And even when he cut his hair, you know, he seemed to lose the power of God. Now, Samson had mighty strength because he was filled with the power of God. Not because he had long hair. Now, in this particular story of Samson, it, it goes hand in hand, but it was it was specifically the Spirit of God that gave him his power. All right, not long hair. You're not going to get mighty, mighty strength just because you grow your hair long. <laughs> You're going to get the kind of strength if God desires you to have that, and that's what God desired. That's what God wanted Samson to have uh, because of the Spirit of God being upon you. Anything that you do that is of profit to, to God's kingdom is because the Spirit of God is upon you. Um, all right, and, that, and that's, so that being said, there are some things that Samson does, and you say to yourself, man, you know, does that make sense? This isn't really a pattern for how we should live our lives, but yet the Spirit of the Lord is upon him, and the, the father and mother didn't realize that God was in this, and the Lord is in it, according to verse number four. On his way to Timnath, so, okay, so they, clearly, he gets his way on this. The Bible doesn't talk much more about the struggle between him and his parents, but at the end of the day, Samson wins over as far as getting together with this woman because the next thing you know, they're on their way to Timnath. And um, on their way down, he encounters this lion. And so on his way to Timnath, Samson destroys a lion, but he doesn't tell anybody about him. We see that in verses 5 through 7. Then went Samson down and his father and his mother and Timnath and came to the vineyards of Timnath. And behold, a young lion roared against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him and he rent him as he would have rent a kid. That would be like a, a goat or a small goat or a small sheep. Um, and he had nothing in his hand. It was his bare hands, right? He destroyed this lion. And he told not his father or his mother what he had done. So he didn't tell anybody about this, but he had great victory over this lion, okay? Later, Samson comes across the carcass of the lion 
and bees had formed honey in it. And he takes uh, some honey and gives it to his parents, also without telling them where it came from. And that's verses number 8 and 9. So, uh, verse number 8, And after a time he returns to take her, and they turned her aside to see the carcass of the lion. And behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. And he took thereof uh, in his hands and went on eating and came to his father and mother. And he gave them, and they did eat. But he told not them that he had taken the honey out of the carcass of the lion. And they would not have eaten had they known that. That would be in violation of God's law as well. And so they wouldn't have done that. Um, but they ended up eating this honey out of um, the carcass of this lion. Very interesting. Um, uh, by the end of these three chapters, um, there will have been an example of eating out of a carcass and drinking water out of a carcass. Now, that's what's that mean? I don't know. <laughs> but it is interesting that that's part of this story. Um, and so here we have, uh, um, he destroys this lion. They get honey out of it. His father has a feast for Samson and the women uh, and the woman from Timnath. Okay, and then thirty companions are brought to the feast, and Samson put out a riddle to them. And we see that in verses number ten through fourteen. So his father went down unto the woman, and Samson made there a feast. So uh, for so used the young men for so used the young men to do. So they have this feast for Samson and his new wife, and she does become his wife. We see that you know this isn't just a party. This is a ceremony for marriage, and, and we see that in, later in the next chapter. Um, and so he creates this feast, and he has 30 young companions that are part of uh, this ceremony and this feast. And it came to pass, verse number 11, and it came to pass when they saw him that they brought 30 companions to be with him. So these companions are Philistines. These are from her, you know, neck of the wood. This is from the woman of Timnath. They're Philistines. And so Samson, in verse number 12, said unto them, I will now put forth a riddle unto you, if you can clear, uh, certainly declare it to me within seven days of the feast and find it out, then I will give you 30 sheets and uh, 30 changes of garment. Now, 30 sheets and 30 changes of garment is a big deal, apparently, because we're going to see in just a moment, uh, they're so upset about this because they can't figure out the riddle, um, that they tell the woman of Timnath, his new wife, did you bring us here so that we would be stripped of all of our goods? Did you bring us here so we'd be poor? Figure, tell us the answer to this riddle. And, and, and so they want to know what the answer to the riddle is. But So these 30 companions are brought to the feast, and Samson puts forth this riddle to them. Um, right? And so, uh, and so verse number 13, But if you cannot declare it, then shall ye give me 30 sheets and 30 changes of garments. And they said unto him, Put forth thy riddle that we may hear it. So they want to hear the riddle. What is the riddle. Verse number 14. And he said unto them, Out of the uh, eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth sweetness. And they could not in three days expound the riddle. Now, there's no way for them to know this. Clearly, he came up with this riddle through his experience that he had with the lion and the honey. Um, how would they possibly be able to figure this riddle out? Except they find a way. Right? They're going to figure out a way, because Samson didn't tell anybody about it. He didn't tell his parents or anybody what had happened. And so they're going to find a way to get the answer to this riddle. Verse number 15, okay, the 30 Philistines' um, companions convince the woman of Timnath, his new wife, to figure out the riddle, and, then, uh, then, uh, and she tells them. Verse number 15, and it came to pass on the seventh day that they said unto Samson's wife, okay, this is definitely um, his new wife now, entice thy husband that he may declare unto us the riddle, lest we burn thee and thy father's house with fire. Now that seems extreme. This whole thing accelerated really fast. This isn't just like a light joking around type of riddle. This is like, you better figure this out, or what, right? They're going to have to give um, 30 sheets and 30 um, uh, uh, changes of garments, which apparently is a big deal to them. Because they say, tell us or we're going to burn your house down. And they specifically say, we're going to burn you and your father alive as part of what, the, what they're doing here. And then they said this, have you called us to take that we have? Did you bring us here just to rob us of everything we have? Okay. Um, is it not so? And so uh, clearly this is a big deal. The, the 30 changes of garments and 30 sheets would be very big to them. This is a huge loss for them. And so they, they really want to know the answer to this riddle. And Samson's wife wept before him, before Samson, and, and said, Thou dost but hate me, and lovest me not. 
Thou hast put forth a riddle unto the children of my people, and hast told, uh, has not told it me. And he said unto her, Behold, I have not told it my father nor my mother, and shall I tell it thee? And she wept before him the seven days while their feast lasted, and it came to pass on the seventh day that he told her, because she lay sore upon him. And she told the riddle to the children of her people. So um, she gets it out of him because of her constant nagging about this. And, uh, and, and then so um, she goes and she goes back and tells her people, the children of her people. And she lets these men know what the answer is. Now, verse number 18. And the men of the city said unto him on the seventh day, before the sun went down, what is sweeter than honey and what is stronger than a lion? Wow, they figure this out. And Samson says to himself, there's only one way. They could have figured this out. Right? End of verse number 18. Um, and he said unto them, If ye had not plowed with my heifer, <laughs> you had not found out my riddle. Interesting wording. <laughs> Referring to your wife. but um, So he figured out how they knew, right, the answer to this riddle. Uh, and so um, he, is, he does carry through with his promise, by the way. Uh, in verse number 19 and 20, he does what he said he's going to do. Samson made a good on his en the end of, uh, uh, the, his end of the deal. But he was angry about it. Verse number 19, And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he went down to um, Ashkelon, and slew thirty men of them, and took their spoil, and gave changes of garments unto them which expounded the riddle. And his anger was kindled. His anger was, he was more upset about this and mad about this. And he went up to his father's house. And so he leaves that area there of Timnath and goes back to his father's house. He's, he's angry about what had happened. And uh, verse number 20 says, But Samson's wife was given to his companion, whom he had used as his friend. And so after he leaves, all upset about what happened, this unusual, just an unusual story, um, his wife is given to one of those companions, one of those 30 men, uh, and his, it's his father. We'll see in chapter number 15, it's his father who does this, gives um, um, his, his wife, all right? Which brings us to chapter number 15. So Samson now, he's, he's gone home for a while, and he, he's cooled off apparently, and now Samson desires to go, you know, unto my wife, but uh, finds out his father had given her away, verse number one, but it came to pass within a while after... Uh, in the time of wheat harvest, that Samson visited his wife with a kid, and he said, I will go into my wife into the chamber. But his father would not suffer him to go in or allow him to go in. And his father said, I verily thought that thou hadst, uh, hadst utterly hated her. Therefore I gave her to thy companion. Is not, your, is not her younger sister fairer than she? Take her, I pray thee, instead of her. And so he finds out that his wife by his father was given away, um, and now that sounds unusual to us, right? There's a lot more um, uh, parental involvement in these things, apparently, than, than what we would be accustomed to in our culture today, um, but it's much more common in that culture, in that time, for a, a mother and father to choose a wife. Now, they happen to give um, him permission to marry this woman, which they were against, but um, when the time came and they felt like this is an opportunity, uh, to get him away from her, they just gave her to some, gave her to uh, somebody else. So he finds out that um, uh, that she she was given away, but he's very angry about this. He's not happy about this at all. In fact, he reacts to this in a great way. Samson uh, claims he is blameless in what he is um, about to do in verse number three. So out of his anger, he's going to do something to the Philistines, but he claims this isn't my fault. Right, verse number three. And Samson said concerning them, um, them being the Philistines. Now shall I be more blameless than the uh, Philistines, though I do them a displeasure. So I'm going to do something against them, um, but it's not my fault. It's because of what my dad did in giving away uh, my wife to somebody else, and he's going to retaliate against the Philistines for this. Um, uh, and so we see in verse 4 and 5, Samson burns up the Philistines' harvest. Notice if you would, verse number 4, And Samson went and caught 300 foxes, um, which is an amazing feat in itself, right? And took firebrands and turned tail to tail and put a firebrand in the midst between two tails. And when he had set the brands on fire, he let them go into the standing corn of the Philistines and burnt up both the shocks and also the standing corn and the vineyards with olives. He used this method 
to burn down the Philistines' harvest that they would have eventually, their plants and their crops that they would have. Um, this method of catching these foxes and foot and firebrands on them and somehow turn to tail to tail, somehow maybe tying their tails together or put them together um, and then set them loose. And uh, with the firebrands, with the fire going and these foxes running every, every direction um, and end up burning up their crops. And so um, uh, uh, Samson burns up the Philistines' crops. We see that in verse number five, uh, four and five. Uh, and when the, when the Philistines find out Samson had done this, all right, they, they carry through with what they said they were going to do before, and they burned the house of the, the woman of Timnath and her father. Um, uh, notice verse number six. Then the Philistines said, Who had done this? And they answered, Samson the son-in-law of the Timnite, because he had taken his wife and given her to his companion. And the Philistines came up and burnt her and her father with fire. And that's what they said they were going to do in verse number 15 of the previous chapter when they were all upset with her for not giving the riddle or knowing the riddle, the answer to the riddle. And so they carried through with this. So we see that the threat that they have did include actually not just burning her father's house, but him and his and, and the woman of Timnath as well to burn them alive and to kill them. And so, and they carry through with that. Samson vows to avenge the Philistines and attacks and kills many of them. And then he goes and hides in a cave. Now those verse number seven and eight. And Samson said unto them, Though ye have done this, yet will I be avenged of you, and after that I will cease. And he smote them hip and thigh with a great slaughter. Now, what all does a great slaughter mean? I don't know. It's a, it's a large amount of people that were killed. A great slaughter of some sort. Um, uh, uh, and he went down and dealt uh, and dwelt in the top of the wreck, um, rock. I'm sorry, rock Edom. So he has a vengeance. He avenges them uh, in a great way and has a great slaughter uh, amongst them. Um, uh, uh, and then he goes and hides in this rock in the rock of Edom. Now. There's a lot more to the story, and we're going to get into it next week as we continue on. Um, but uh, as, as, we've, as we've noticed already, uh, in a lot of ways, Samson is doing things that, as I've mentioned several times already, that are not an example to us of how we should live our lives. Um, Samson is a man who seems to be just going after his own desires, very reactive, okay? not, not desiring what God would have him to do, but yet the Lord continues to use him to bring... Um, victory for Israel, and we're going to see as Judah even, you know, comes to the help of the Philistines, the tribe of Judah are going to help out the Philistines coming up in this chapter, um, and you may want to read ahead, you can do that, <laughs> and see what happens, um, but the Lord certainly uses Samson, and God can use any of us, um, you know, we, we definitely make mistakes, and we definitely do things that are not right, of uh, uh, the Lord would have us to do, but yet God uses us in spite of us. And what a wonderful, what a wonderful lesson. So let's have a word of prayer, and we'll get ready for our morning service. Lord Jesus, we do thank you so much for all that you have blessed us with, and uh, thank you for your word. Um, Lord, I pray that it would continue to speak to us. Um, help us, Lord, to know you better and to love you more, and may it make a difference in our hearts and lives. Um, Lord, may we desire to be filled with your Spirit. And Lord, we understand that we have your Holy Spirit indwelling upon us now when we get saved and we have your Holy Spirit in us, but yet oftentimes we don't yield to you, we yield to the flesh. And Lord, I pray you'd help us to yield to the Holy Spirit, yield to you, and, and that you would use us. Thank you for all that you've blessed us.